Hello and welcome to part 4 of our SEH Overwrite module. In the last part, we created a POC and replicated the crash in our application. In this part, we will further enhance our POC and take control of the execution. So these are the few software that I am assuming that you as a learner have a basic knowledge of. If you do not, please check out the resources mentioned at the end of this video. They are really helpful resources and they will help you to learn these software or techniques that we are using in this module from scratch. So this is our module structure. We are on part 4 that is controlling the execution. These are the few steps that uh, we will be doing in this video. So first we will identify the location of the character or the rather bytes which overwrite SEH pointer and thus the EIP. We will then verify this location and we will finally redirect the execution to a memory location that is controlled by us. Now in order to do that we will first have to find an accessible and reliable address in memory that holds or that points to these instructions that is pop pop return and these instructions will decrease the ESP by 8 bytes and return the pointer to NSEH and then we'll write NSEH with the instructions to jump to our buffer. So let's move this to the lab. So this is the POC that we created yesterday. So now what I'll do is I'll use MSF pattern create to generate a pattern of around 2100 characters. So let's move to a Kali machine and I'll use MSF pattern underscore create and length of 2100. I'll copy these characters and paste it in a POC. Copy and I'll paste it in the buffer here. I'll now generate a new PLF file with this updated Python script. Save it. Great. So now our new PLF file has been generated and open the immunity debugger again and I'll attach my DVD explorer to it. Open, run the application. later and now I'll open the new PLF file in a DVDX player so our application has crashed we have an access violation I'll pass this exception to the program using shift F9 and uh, as you can see here that EIP has been overwritten by some characters. Let's verify by viewing SEH chain. So these are the characters with which EIP was overwritten. Let me just copy this and copy to clipboard. SEH handler. Go back to my Kali machine. And now I'll use MSF pattern offset to identify the location. And I'll mention Q for query and I'll paste the string here. So now this tells me that these characters or the starting point of these characters mm -hmm. is from 612. So that means the characters from 613 to 616 are being written in EIP. So let's verify this. I'll restart it. I'll go back to my POC. Now I'll remove this pattern and uh, I'll send it A's into 608. I'm sending it 608 because overall we need 8 bytes 4 for SEH handler and 4 for NSEH. And then I'll specify NSEH. So these B's will be written in NSEH because the stack goes downwards and we will encounter NSEH before we encounter SEH. Plus C and then I'll send it these 
into 1388 and generate the file I run the application later on the PLF file in playlist you will not PLF so we have triggered the stack based buffer overflow and if I view the SEH chain we should see C's in our current SEH handler and 42 42 42 which is 4 B's in NSEH now let's see what happens if I pass this exception to the program I use shift F9 and as you can see here that EIP has been overwritten with 43 43 43 43 which is nothing but X for capital C now our next task is to find a pointer or a reliable pointer to pop pop return instructions in one of the DLLs either system DLL or the application DLLs so to do that I'll restart the application and uh, I'll run it so now I'll use Mona library to find that address for me it's Mona and SEH let's see what it returns so looks like Mona has returned let's see the output and so these are the pointers that are available to us to store in our POC. So I'll just go ahead and uh, pick this one up. It seems interesting. Copy to clipboard and address. I'll go back to my POC and just put it here. now I'll change C's with this memory address we'll write this in the backward formats because the processor uses little EDN representation now I'll generate the new PLF file and uh, my application is already running I'll go to the CPU window and put a pointer at the memory address that we have specified Okay, function two, and now I'll open my PLF file here. Dot PLF. I'll pass the exception to the program, and we have hit our breakpoint, which is pop pop return. Now if I step into it, pop, pop, return. Now we are at the memory location over which NSEH handler was supposed to be stored and we had overwritten with 4 B's that is 42, 42, 42, 42 which is nothing but X for capital B. Now next task is to find our buffer and jump to it. So we have, as you can see that we have D's here. So all we have to do here is take a short jump of uh, around let's say 8 bytes and pad a shell code with NOPs to be on the safer side so let's do this so in order to get the hex equivalent of jump 8 bytes instruction I'll go to Kali machine and here I'll run MSF hyphen nasm underscore shell and here I'll specify jump dollar plus eight so EB06 is the hex code for a short jump of eight bytes we copy this and put it in our POC put these instructions here e, oh, sorry e, e, 
x zero six, and I'll pad it with you know bees, and instead of bees, I'll now send it n o p. Save this, generate the PLF file again, but I'll have to first restart the application. I'll generate the PLF file and I'll put the breakpoint at our memory location of pop pop return. Sorry, I'll have to first run the application. Yeah. Later. And now I'll go to the memory address and put a breakpoint here. Now I'll open the PLF file. So we have triggered our first buffer overflow. It's passed this to the program, and we are at pop pop return instructions. Let's step into these instructions. Pop pop return. And we come to our short jump, and let's see where it lands us. So it has landed us correctly at the starting of our NOP. So this is the place where we we'll place our shell code in the later videos. So that was it for this video. In the next part, we'll identify the bad characters. So these are the few learning resources that you can use to learn more about the software or techniques that we are using in these modules or in the previous module also. Thank you guys for watching this video, and I'll see you in the next part. Meanwhile, please subscribe to our channel Yaksha CAC and follow us on Twitter. Our Twitter handle is at the rate Yaksha 443. And if you want files and PDF slides for this or the previous module, all you have to do is tweet about any of the modules, mention our Twitter handle, and once we receive your tweet, we'll send you the link to download the files by Twitter DM.